So first off, Herman Molstein, I'm the director of sales for Cumulo based here in Southern California. So let me tell you a little bit about the company. I'm gonna keep it very brief and I'm gonna move very quickly. Three-year-old storage company based in Seattle. The three founders got together and they uh, first met each other when they worked at Isilon. And the three founders were the ones who actually created uh, 1FS and the Isilon scale out file system. Their names are on 55 of the 62 patents that are there. They got together a little bit over three years ago and said, let's put the band back together again. And, uh, and they uh, went ahead and raised $24 million in uh, 22 days without even a business plan. And uh, since then, we've raised $67 million, very well-funded company, and we've got customers with uh, capacities up to over four petabytes right now. Besides just building a brand new file system, they decided that they were gonna do some research calls and they went out and they did over 600 interviews to understand where the pain points are with storage. So challenges that we saw out there, data growth and management, performance demands, content distribution, security, lack of storage and innovation. A lot of companies just say, I've got faster storage, it's cheaper, but there's no innovation there. A lot of it, it's just more of the same. And then the economic factors, especially with the cost, everyone's going to 4K, 8K, 8K stereo. You've got cost factors and the growth is growing there. And then you've got this whole cloud dynamic. What do we do with the cloud? Do we, uh, do we go to the cloud? Do we not go to the cloud? Where do we go here? A company called Network Appliance back in the 90s came out with the first really viable NAS product there. And this is kind of a basic block diagram. They said um, they've got NVRAM proprietary and, and a couple of different things here. They grew that out and said, we need some redundancy. So they put a second head on for active passive and they created something uh, called Waffle, which is a write optimized file system. It's very optimized for small files. Um, and then a little bit later on, another company came out called Isilon. Isilon came out and built the first scale out file system and they said, let's do something a little different. Instead of being write optimized, why don't we do it read optimized? And they did, did that so that they're very good with large files, but not good with small files. And again, they went to proprietary hardware. You can't just buy hardware, put it, out, put it on and load their file system on it. You have to buy their product. As you can see with our architecture, uh, this is what's currently out there today. We're a little bit differently different. We don't believe in anything that's proprietary. We believe in using commodity hardware. We sell appliances and the appliances are just standard products that are out there. There's nothing special, nothing proprietary in them. I can give you a bill of materials of what's in the box. Today we have our appliances, we're always gonna sell appliances, but in the future, you're gonna be able to buy uh, certified configurations from HP, Dell, IBM, and be able to load our software on it because customers don't wanna to continue to spend a lot of money for proprietary stuff. So what we did is we did a little differently, nothing proprietary, so we start off with SSD. We're a flash-based company, so we're really good with small files, we're really good with big files. Um, to keep the cost down, we go out to spinning disk. Um, we give you deployment options. Today we have x86 appliances, VMs. Uh, today is for test and dev. In the future, you'll be able to put those VMs into production. Also software only, so you can actually go into EC2, into the cloud, and build out a cluster up in, in EC2. We're based on Linux, and the file system that we've created is called QSFS, Cumulus Scalable File System. It was built from the ground up. We also heard that people want to see storage like an API. They, don't, they want to be able to program it and uh, be able to put it into their pipeline and orchestrate it. So we're 100% RESTful API. We also have remote management and monitoring as well uh, on the system. So everything that you expect from enterprise class storage. So today you can go ahead and take our nodes and uh, stack them on top of each other, connect them with a 10 gig or 40 gig and build, and build a scale out file system. Looks very simple. You've got Macs, Unix boxes, Linux, Windows connected to your switch and it goes directly to, to our system. It lands first on SSD and then it tears off the spinning disk. So you get the performance of SSD at the front end and, and spinning disk at the back end to keep the cost down. 
So managing data is really what it comes down to. You should expect storage just to plug in, turn on. It should give you your share and be able to go from there. But it's really where you're spending your time answering questions like, what's killing my performance right now? What's going on? I just got a phone call. Is it the storage? Is it the network? Is it the host? What's killing my storage right now? How'd you like the storage to tell you that 89% of your IOs in the last five minutes were 32K writes to this, to this project? Or you walk in and say, what's driving my growth? I've got to go to management and I've got to buy more storage. How do you explain where it all went? Because every time you buy it, Within 10 days, you're already filled it up and you're saying, what do I do now? I've got to go ask for more money. So here's how everyone in the industry does it today. Everyone today writes a scanner and they walk their file system and it walks the file system and builds a database. This has some challenges to it because if you've got a very large file system, you want to see what's happening. It takes a long time to figure out what's going on. It could take hours or days. Um, to figure out as you're scanning. Let's write scanners faster and write multi-threaded scanners so the more scans you're doing at the same time, your storage slows down. You can't really even do real work at that point. So what we've done is we've taken this and we've built it directly into the file system. So we have real-time analytics built into the file system. Uh, so that's really key. It's also accessible through the API, so you can access it anytime you want and orchestrate it. So no more tree walks to understand what's happening. So as something changes within your project, you can go ahead and every 15 seconds it updates so you know exactly what's going on. So when you walk in in the morning and it says, I've used 10 terabytes last night, what happened? It's not doing a bunch of DUs to figure out what, who used what and walking down a whole bunch of trees. Not only can we do it with capacity, but we can do it with real-time performance. So we can tell you who the hottest file is right now in your system in real time. We can also tell you who's using that file right now. And that becomes very important as you're trying to figure out how to take a shared resource and roll it out to everybody there. So if a project's running at 10,000 ops and all of a sudden it jumps because somebody wrote a render job that's really poorly written and it jumps to a million ops and crushes your storage, what just happened? You'd be able to identify that within seconds. One of the things we've done with our API is we built a user community and in this user community, we've uh, now have people putting things into GitHub. I don't know if you're familiar with GitHub, but the ability for you to write some, uh, some applications against our system using the API and then share it with the rest of the community there. Uh, one person wrote this. It's uh, kind of a, um, a, storage report, a storage report for management, showing them the, uh, what's the capacity and growth. Uh, it's very simple, you've got a URL up there, you can just send out the URL, they can click on this anytime and see what's going on in the system. We even give you capacity trending, telling you when you're gonna hit 100% if you continue at this growth rate. We give you other things inside of it, network throughput, as well as activity summary by IOPS, and you know file activity by IOPS, and then you can go ahead and drill down on any of the directories or projects that you're working on and be able to send this report out. You can email this report out very simply to people who are interested. A lot of people don't do chargeback today, but I think the trend today is they call it shame back. You shame your users into saying, you're using all of my storage today. We have two models today, QC24 and the QC208. Uh, again, for different kinds of profile work. The QC24 is a 1U uh, appliance that plugs in. It's got two 800 gig SSDs on it and four six terabyte drives, uh, two 10 gig connections on it. Um, it starts at about 50 terabytes uh, uh, of capacity. You start out with four and you can keep adding one at a time as you want to grow from there. We also have the much larger uh, QC208, and each one of these has um, 13 480 S, uh, uh, gigabyte SSDs for six terabytes of, um, of SSD cache on the front end, and then 26 8 terabyte drives in it for 208 terabytes of storage. It has four 40 gig network connections, but if you don't have 40 gig, we can easily plug into 10 gig networks. Summary. Real-time analytics is built into the system. Software-only solution. Again, we're only using commodity hardware. There's nothing uh, special here. Uh, flash first, 
so you can get maximum performance and capacity. And one of the things that we did a little bit differently is a subscription pricing model. A lot of companies sell you the hardware, then they sell you a, a license to run their file system, then every application or every extra, you have to pay for that. We don't believe in that. We, you pay a monthly subscription fee, and with that subscription fee, you get all the applications that we have today and in the future, including 24 by seven telephone support. Um, if you stop paying your subscription fee, your system doesn't stop. It's still your system. We don't touch it. It's not like the cloud. You stop paying your cloud bill, and all of a sudden your data is gone. So it's still there. And again, it's optimized for the widest range of workloads that are there. There's the phone number. I'll be around afterwards, and that's it. <laughs>